Welcome to Perching for Dummies Winter Edition. Hi, I'm John White, and you are watching Perching for Dummies, or all you ever wanted to know about perch fishing, but were afraid to ask on social media because somebody will call you a newbie. Anyway, I am a certified perchaholic, and hopefully I'll have you telling people what to do on Facebook in no time. If you want to become a social media perch fishing expert, all you need is a couple of fish and a wide angle lens. But if you want to catch perch for fun or to eat, it's a pretty basic learning curve. It's just a matter of where, when, and how, with where being the most challenging. So we can't talk about where until we talk a little bit about when. I always think of winter like a hockey game. There's three periods. First ice or first period is the best and probably the most predictable. Perch love it under the ice. Whether it's to escape surface predators or help contain prey, this is when the schools of big pelagic fish move into the systems or habitat where they will eventually spawn. On our lake, I typically find them between 20 and 40 feet of water, where there's abundant suspended bait fish and goby in their preferred winter depth. If you're just out for a day with the kids and quality doesn't matter, just action, you could find the most convenient area in 6 to 12 feet of water with a grassy, weedy bottom. There you'll find resident fish of various sizes. They live there all year long. And you can certainly get enough big fish for a meal. Plus you might catch sunfish, bluegill, rock bass, and other species. But if you're looking for a big schooling perch, that might take a little more work. Here I'm on a huge flat in 22 to 24 feet of water. Note the bottom composition. Note that I'm using a spoon that will call in big fish from a long way away. I've found smaller fish pretty quickly. Feeding fish and the flash of the spoon will draw in bigger fish. Watch what happens when the bigger fish come in. They just push the little fish right out of the way. This is when it's handy to have a second rod or somebody fishing beside you. These big fish are moving a lot. They have a short attention span, so while you're pulling one up and taking it off, they could leave. During first ice, it's important to use aggressive baits. Note that I'm using a spoon almost exclusively through this period. Using larger spoons will do more than just attract attention from other fish. It can also filter out the size of fish that you get. It's true that most of the weight or length class records for any species are actually caught on smaller baits, not larger baits. But when perch are neutral to aggressive during first ice, you don't want to spend your whole day reeling up and letting go six inch fish, unless you just want to keep the kids busy. But if you want to filter out and just get fewer bigger fish, spoons or other big aggressive baits are the ticket. I always start with a spoon or something very aggressive and then work to more neutral and then negative. So I might only have three baits with me. I have a spoon, like a slab grabber, and then I'll have a drop shot with a slab grabber on the bottom and a, maybe a Berkeley Nymph at the top and then uh, work all the way down to a little teardrop or something of that nature. I've started aggressive and stayed aggressive and it's worked for me so far. Some of my favorite spoons include Johnson Slim Fish. Note that I've taken the treble hook off and put on a single chartreuse fusion number no. six hook. Next would be a jack spoon like a slab grabber. And this I'll often rig as a drop shot with the spoon on the bottom and a small rubber bait like a Berkeley Power Nymph on the top. This is particularly effective when the spoon bite starts to die off. It gives them an option. In murky or stained water, flutter spoons with a little color work great. Unlike their cousins walleye, who are basically nocturnal feeders, perch are sight feeders. They will feed at night, but most of their feeding is done during the day. First ice in southern Ontario is typically in December, so there are fewer daylight hours to feed, and so they're aggressive more of the day. What can change this is a full moon in clear skies at night. There's little to no salooner effects in non-tidal waters, and inland lakes are non-tidal waters. Even the Great Lakes have relatively no tide. An extreme tide, even for Lake Ontario, would only be 4 to 6 centimeters. This is not enough to create current and would be mitigated by a 5k wind. But the full moon offers a perfect silhouette ambush bite. This is true for a lot of species, particularly pike. So if there's a full moon with a clear sky, typically the bite's better later in the afternoon. Of course, none of this is written in stone, but it's typically what I experience during this time of year. Taking advantage of early ice during any time of the day is better than what's coming up. 
As we move into midwinter, or the second period as I call it, things are going to get a little tougher. As the ice gets a little thicker, safer, starts to collect a lot more people. There's a lot more people to share fish with, make noise, spook fish, and the days get a little longer. The feeding frenzy that started during early ice comes to an end. Fish become a little more selective what time of the day they eat. Fish don't move as much. That means you have to find them rather than they find you. With more daylight hours, sight feeders become a little more selective when they're aggressive. They're typically most aggressive at first light because they haven't fed all night. Small fish might feed throughout the day, but larger fish might pick up again in the late afternoon. The same aggressive baits that you use during first ice might be good for the first couple of hours of the day. But late morning and mid-afternoon, probably going to have to change both baits and techniques. Perch become very selective and sometimes just mouth baits. You won't feel the bite even with the most sensitive rods. They rush up to a bait put it in their mouth and then they don't move. This is when a fast tip rod should be replaced with a more flexible tip. The most sensitive rods won't feel the bite but you'll have a visual aid that will certainly help. Some anglers that uh, fish a lot of bluegill and crappy they'll use a slip float as a visual aid. Some of the most effective finesse baits through this period are tungsten teardrops, tide flies and bugs, most of them tipped with maggots or gulp waxies, ice fries, very small baits. The bait can't be too small and it might be specific to the body of water that you're on. I'm on Lake Simcoe and we have a huge bloodworm hatch every winter. But for the most part the bait just has to look edible. Technique is at least as important as bait itself. Most recreational anglers overwork baits. A simple pattern similar to what you would see in a heart monitor will do the trick. You can speed up or slow down the cadence to see what they react to. They might just hit a dead stick. Having a camera certainly helps. You get to see how fish are reacting to baits and just how your bait is moving with what effort you put into it. Sometimes perch just react to bait movement and profile. They're not really feeding. You might only get one crack at a reaction bite. Since they're in that neutral to negative mode, they just turn away if they don't get it the first time. Remember, the spike is just to get attention. The subtle move at the bottom is to cause a reaction. So spike it more often when you don't mark fish, and then let it sit when you do. You could just use minnows on a hook. It doesn't require a lot of technique, and it's the primary forge for big perch in a lot of lakes. But as I say in my video, when not to match the hatch, sometimes trying to compete with something that's abundant can work against you, and you just offer them something different. But perch do recognize and target the vulnerable, so a minnow with a hook in the side of it is certainly acting different and weaker than everything else around it. As we move out of the February blahs into March, things start to change drastically. Water conditions change as runoff fogs up the water, and fish move closer into the systems, staging to spawn. Big females consolidate and really put on the feed bag. Larger females will hunt together, and they won't be quite ready for males yet until their eggs are ripe. But they will be moving closer to spawning habitat like river mouths. Other potential spawning areas are deep, weedy bays with southern exposure, sewer runoffs, in front of marinas or even in marinas canals, anywhere that will warm quickly after ice out. This will be a long transition until ice out. But as the food web moves shallower, so do the big fish. They'll be constantly on the move until they find concentrations of food. They'll revisit a lot of the same areas so you don't have to move as much. Unfortunately, they become most aggressive when it's harder to get on the ice as the ice actually pushes up on shore and starts to break up. As I said earlier, nothing is written in stone, and each lake has its own food web, transition period, spawning table, and it all differs depending on the makeup of the lake. On Lake Erie, maybe the best perch fishery in all of Ontario, perch live their whole life deep and only visit the shallow swamps to spawn. They don't necessarily move into systems like the Niagara River. Gobi might be the only commonality between a lake like Lake Erie and Lake Simcoe. Also true for Lake Ontario. You might have a system like the Bay of Quinte, but the fish live their entire life in the system. 
On a small inland lake, you might look for a deep soft bottom trough where the water temperature might be two or three degrees warmer on the bottom. As the season wears on, they'll transition closer and closer to weedy spawning habitat. Some of these fish will be spawning right after ice out. But typically in these small lakes, water temperature has to get up above 52 degrees all the way up to 60 degrees. The big females will be feeding all the way up until a couple of days before the spawn. So, regardless of what lake you're fishing, what period of the season you're in, always start your day aggressive. Let the fish tell you how negative they are. During first and last ice, stay put for longer periods of time. Fish are on the move constantly. During mid-season, you have to move a lot. Fish aren't moving, you have to find them. Don't stay anywhere for more than 20 minutes. If there's no fish in 20 minutes, move 20 to 50 yards. And last but not least, please release the fish that you're not going to eat. Lakes with jumbo perch is a finite resource and have decades of genetics carried forward. Help keep our fisheries healthy. Tight lines and we'll see you out there. Please hit the subscribe button for more videos like this.